Welcome to Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. I'm Steve White, Battalion Chief with the Fishers Fire Department. In this segment, we're going to expand on the functionality of utilizing a heavy wrecker when a vehicle is trapped by a much larger vehicle. To help us today, we have Todd Taylor, Battalion Chief with the Wayne Township Fire Department, and Kirk Connect with Zors Incorporated. Today we're going to talk about an incident that actually occurred in the fire district that we're standing in, where we had a semi-tractor trailer overrun a passenger vehicle with two people trapped inside the passenger vehicle. The picture that you're seeing now on the videotape is after the private tow recovery industry arrived on the scene. The local fire department had worked for about an hour attempting to rescue the passenger. The passenger was pinned by the front steer from about mid-chest to mid-thigh. They attempted several, say, several things to make that work. Tow and recovery industry arrived on the scene. They were able to marry the front steer and the axle together and then make the lift. And in about five minutes, they had the patient out. By saying that, with what we have set up here today is very similar to the picture that you've seen. We have a 10,000 pound front end on top of the, the passenger vehicle. There's really not much of a way that we could make a lift on this vehicle, on the larger vehicle, without making, without changing the center of gravity on that. We have the heavy wrecker hooked up already, the chains are in place, and in this case, we're going to make the lift on that heavier vehicle, and then we're going to use the snatch block that we have attached to the front outrigger on our heavy wrecker to actually pull the vehicle out away from the heavier vehicle so that we're not working underneath the load. When we call for this heavy wrecker, we call for our partners in the tow and recovery industry, we have to make sure that we leave them enough room. As we spoke in the last segment, that's just like a ladder truck, and a ladder truck needs the front of the building, the heavy wrecker needs the front of the incident. He has a 16 to 18 foot footprint that he needs. So when you call for them, ensure that you leave enough room for them to be there. Also, think ahead about what you're going to do or what you have a plan of so that when the heavy wrecker operator gets there, the rescue officer and the heavy wrecker operator can talk about what needs to be done and then the action area that you're going to be working in. Now saying that, there's a couple of things that we want to review. Obviously the most knowledgeable person we have with chains is going to be our heavy wrecker operator. But some of you do carry chains on your, on your rescue trucks. As we look at our chains, we want to make sure two things. First and foremost, a lot of us that carry chains no longer carry our certification tags. This certification tag is pretty important for us. Without this tag on there, technically this chain is no longer a rated chain. The other thing that we want to discuss is that we're all carrying forged chains. All of our forged chains have weld links. A little difficult to tell in this one, but that's a, a weld link on our forged chain. We cannot hook the throat onto the weld point or onto that forge point. If we do that, we've made the chain relatively weak. What we need to do is ensure that we hook into the non-weld side. Once we do that, then that chain is safe. So if we are going to chain or if we're going to, to do anything with this vehicle prior to the heavy wrecker getting there, ensure that we chain on the opposite side of that forge link. As we get ready to make this lift, Kurt's going to get set up, and as you see, we have a snatch block already set up for us. We want to make sure that we leave that loose so that there's no trip hazard. We've also short jacked the wrecker. We can do that in the position that he's in to save our footprint if we have to. Kurt and I are ready to make the lift. We've made our chains. The tow and recovery operator has, has rigged the truck and rigged the vehicle to be pulled out. Got our, our remote control, we're set to make the lift. As we do this, we want to make sure that everybody is out of the strike zone. The other advantage about having the rotator here is that we have our snatch block set up to the outrigger so that we can actually make that pull. This snatch block can be set up to just about anything, including a fire truck or any other vehicle that's on the scene of an incident. Kurt's ready to make the lift. The rescue officer is talking with the, the tow and recovery operator. We're going to make the lift. We're going to go up about two or three feet just to get pressure off the vehicle. And as that happens, we're going to pull the vehicle out. Kurt, you ready? You are. Rescue officer talking with the tow and recovery operator, making the lift with the heavier vehicle. As 
You can see the amount of weight that's being lifted off of that vehicle actually raises the frame of that vehicle and now we can tighten up the chain on the other snatch block and actually pull that vehicle away from the incident so none of our rescuers are operating underneath a hazard area. And now that the vehicle is out from underneath the load, that load can actually be lowered back down and make the scene safe. We can do the extrication on the vehicle itself. This makes our scene extremely safe. Now it becomes nothing more than our, our normal vehicle extrication that we would do on an everyday basis. 10,000 pounds been lifted off the front of that. Again, the scene is safe. As we bring this segment to a close, Hopefully we were able to show some functionality of how else a heavy wrecker can assist during a big truck extrication. We'd like to thank both Todd and Kurt for helping out with this segment, as well as Homatro for sponsoring this segment. I'm Steve White. Thanks for watching Train Minutes.